Hello, I'm Captain Iceblock. I represent Storm Spirit players around the world, and inside the channel, you'll find guides on Storm, other heroes, middle lane mechanics, streams, and coaching sessions. Your support keeps the content flowing, and if you'd like to contribute, find out how down below. With all that said, let's go. While 7.23 brought no direct changes to Storm, Indirect Changes has offered some new options on how the hero is played. With the addition of outposts, neutral items and the bloodstone change, Storm's role in the game has shifted a bit. Let's talk laning. Storm still very much has the same flexibility regarding his laning options. If the lane is dangerous, you can still shove out lanes and rotate through the jungle. Although, at the early levels, it'll be a resource-consuming process, as you'd typically eat a lot of harassment trying to quickly kill the waves, and possibly need extra mangoes to maintain your pace in the jungle. However, if the lane is manageable, or better yet, you can actually trade with your opponent, staying in the lane during early levels is always the better option, only leaving to either stack the camps or pick up runes. Because I'm on the Radiant side, stacking the small camp between waves is quite an inconvenience for me, with how fast an empowered Magnus can shove the waves back, so I focus primarily on last hits, harassing Magnus with my abilities in the process. Keep in mind that the neutrals only begin dropping items from minute 7, so if you have been stacking, aim to begin clearing those stacks from that minute. Level 6 onwards, I am fast enough to not only shove the mid wave, but also clear the side camps without missing a creep wave in the middle. In the meanwhile, you can also take a trip to either of the side lanes, farming the camps in between, and help weaken the enemy team in preparation to take the first outposts. Killing spree. Double kill. Where'd he go? New fluid. I'm over here. Dominating performance. Oh, what a mess! Glorious things of life. As soon as you complete the rotation, teleport back to the mid lane and begin the same process anew. So, from level 6, my game plan looks like this. Farm prioritizing the mid lane, in between clearing the side camps, in between ganking the side lanes. Current goal is to get to the bloodstone ASAP while contributing to own team's ability to hold outposts. Let the fun begin! <laughs> Let's talk items. With Kaya being the main component towards a bloodstone, Storm now has more slots than ever. While I usually build two nulls and sell the magic stick after the laning phase, having null null wand is perfectly viable now. Not only that, but you also have space for the neutral items you're bound to pick up on your quest for Bloodstone. So, the fact that you can build Kaya straight into Bloodstone means that instead of getting Bloodstone by minute 20 on a good match, you can get it by minute 18 instead. And if you grab Arcane Boots instead of Power Treads, this number goes even lower, allowing Storms who had no trouble farming come online as early as minute 16. Thank <laughs> you. 
Double kill. So, Where'd he go? Everywhere. <laughs> So, with this in mind, building null null arcanes, Kaed and Bloodstone makes perfect sense as the default build in most of your matches. With Bloodstone immediately doubling your killing, farming potential, just through mana pool and regen alone, converting your boots into travels shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Why travels? Having two options of teleportation immediately doubles your coverage when it comes to defending and sieging the outposts. And in between outposts, teleporting to the base and back is a perfectly viable way to refill your mana and be back for action momentarily, even more so now that one set of shrines has been removed with the recent subpatch. However, if you're way behind, you may still consider going Yules first to defend yourself against nastier spells. And power threads are still a great farming fighting tool when you need to be more active than the cooldowns on your teleports. At the moment, with Trials, my game plan looks like this. Farm, prioritizing the safer waves, while utilizing my superior movement to defend attack convenient outposts. The more places I show on the map, the greater space I generate as opponents have to diverse themselves to hunt me down. If I die, however, it becomes increasingly easier for them to just select one lane and focus their efforts there. So, to avoid dying, after Bloodstone and Travels, I am now considering my defensive options. Usually, BKB is the safest choice, but since in this game, Magnus and Tusk's ultimates go through immunity, the only other spell I am concerned with is Sky's combo, for which Yules does the job nicely, allowing me to skip BKB and enjoy increased damage, regen and an offensive disable. After the defensive item, you're flexible again. Both Bloodthorn and Hex are viable options, or any other preferred item you would think works well in the match. I grab a Hex as a defensive item, since flying into the fight and dropping a Disable on either Magnus or Swan completely ruins their initiation potential. And if not, I can always just Hex and one-shot the supports. And this is it. For the remainder of the match, I am assuming the most dangerous positions, pushing out every lane simultaneously, thus giving space for my Slark to catch up on farm and for Takis to maintain defensive measures. Eventually, thanks to my constant pressure on the entire map, and should I die, Tegas' defense, we hold out with our base intact long enough for the enemy team to separately lose a few heroes, and this enables our weaker team fighting draft to end the game. This is where I'll leave you with the rest of the match. Thank you for watching, good luck.
Stop. 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 Stop.